I would like you to envision a scenario with me. You have recently brought home your child that you were adopting and they ask you before dinner, can I have a snack? I'm hungry. And dinner's ready, gonna be ready in like 10 minutes. And you say, you know what? No, like dinner's gonna be ready really soon. You can wait. And then this kid has a full out colossal meltdown. This isn't just coming out of nowhere. You may think, oh my gosh, this kid's just throwing a tantrum. They're just like so disrespectful. When in reality, this child is probably just dealing with some anxiety and stress about being in a new place. So today we're going to talk about ways that you can help reduce anxiety for your foster or adoptive children. Hey, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I'm an adoptive mom to three kids ages 4 through 12. I'm used to saying 4 to 11, but we had a birthday recently, so 4 to 12 now. I'm almost to the point of being a mom to a teenager, which really freaks me out. Here on my channel, I make a ton of foster and adoptive content to help parents like you make the best choices in their adoption or foster care journey. So if any of that interests you, I'd love for you to subscribe so that we can spend some more time together. Also, I always like to mention that pinned in the comments below is a link to my adoption consultation business called Adopt Informed, where I help families like yours make the best possible decisions in their adoption journey. I can help you find an agency. I can help you um, answer those really specific questions for your situation that you just can't find an answer for on YouTube. So feel free to book a consultation with me. I've already worked with quite a few families and I just have loved every single moment of it. It's been so great to see families move from being completely confused to starting the process and getting on the move. All right, so now let's go ahead and just jump in. Now for what you really came here for, let's talk about how to reduce anxiety for foster and adopted children. So you remember that scenario I mentioned at the very beginning of this video where the kid's throwing a tantrum because you said no, we're eating in 10 minutes and you're just like, what is going on? Well, for foster and adopted kids, they sometimes will have food insecurity. And I have found that this is not only because like they weren't given food in their foster home or at home. Kids who have experienced foster care or adoption may just approach food very differently than a typical kid who has not gone through this trauma. For example, one of our children, I have a story time about this, but our son, when he first moved in with us, well, he wasn't moved in yet. We were visiting. It's the first visit he had at our house. We bought like some fast food for dinner for them. And that kid gobbled, gobbled, gobbled food, like as if he was never going to get food ever again, and then proceeded to throw up all over the kitchen floor. <laughs> and as much as I kind of giggle about that now, like it really is a sign of a different, a deeper issue of this, like, you know, not having food security or not feeling trusting of you yet. They don't know yet that you're safe, that you are going to provide for them. That food isn't going to run out and things like that. It's very common for kids to have food hoarding issues. Maybe they'll like hide it in their room or they'll eat it in their closet. And this is just like very normal at first. So one way to combat all of these issues is to just have a basket of food out at all times. I believe I um, heard this tip first from the Connected Child, which is an awesome adoptive parenting book that I will link below. Highly, highly recommend to read it if you have not, but in the book, Karen Purvis recommends that you have like a basket of food out, maybe it's fruit, just healthier snacks that they can get to at any time. Like there's no limit, they can always have it, it's always gonna be there so that they know that there will always be food for them and it will just help them feel more safe. The second way that you can help reduce anxiety for your foster or adoptive children is to have a predictable schedule. You want to make sure that your daily routine is very predictable and that it's a common thing like we wake up, we brush our teeth, we do this, and you kind of follow the same order each day. I can tell you as someone who also struggles with anxiety, I have struggled with anxiety I think a lot of my life, um, but I always like to know what's going to happen next. And so I understand <laughs> the kid's perspective of like, if you're feeling really nervous in a new place, it really helps for you to know what's gonna come next and be able to predict that. I even did this as a teacher, like on my whiteboard every single day, I would have the agenda and I would write it in order and we followed a very similar schedule every single day and I found that it just helped kids feel more at ease in my classroom. When our older kids first moved in, I actually used like a pocket chart 
that teachers may have. They're like those blue ones and you can put like little cards. And I had a daily schedule with the time next to it. And then there was like a little picture and word of what the activity was. And my kids loved that schedule. They loved to see it. So it's really helpful to kids if you're kind of like in the morning, we always do these things before we eat breakfast or we always do these things before we leave the house. So there's not this huge surprise every day or they don't know what's gonna happen or they feel thrown off by it. You can have a very predictable schedule for them. I also found that really helped on days where we couldn't follow the very strict routine. We had to kind of move something around. In the morning they could wake up and I could have like the times as best as I could figure out for the day of what we were going to do. And they actually really thrived on that predictability and all of that. Now, I will be the first to tell you, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I don't think my kids need that level of predictability at this point in their lives. But back then when they were still, everything was new and they didn't really know us that well and they were in a new environment, I think that was really key to them feeling more comfortable and safe. And like there were days where I wouldn't update it and they'd be like, why is the schedule not like updated today? That's not what we were doing. And so I found out that they actually really did enjoy doing that and they enjoyed being able to see what was going to happen. And I noticed with one of our children in particular who really struggles with anxiety, that their anxiety was much worse if I had not updated the chart for the day. Whereas if I had updated it, they were like, okay, they know what to expect. And so they didn't have to worry about what might happen. As silly as that may sound to you, if you've never had anxiety or dealt with anxiety at all, it really does make a big difference, especially for kids. And I think kids in general thrive on routine, predictability, stability. And so this is just showing them that when I say we're gonna do something, we do it, we follow the schedule, you know what to expect and you can trust me. Along with the schedules and predictability, I know I'm saying this is a big thing, but again, I think this is super important for kids who struggle with anxiety or insecurity about things, is using timers to give your children warnings ahead of time. So I always like to warn my kids if we're going to transition out of an activity, especially if it's an activity they really like and don't want to quit. Like let's say we're at the park and I'm sure some of you guys have experienced if you have kids like the leaving park meltdown because the park is super fun and who wants to leave the park, right? And so what I always do is I'm gonna say, hey guys, in three minutes, we're gonna leave the park. I'm setting the timer and when it beeps, we're going to leave and we can say bye park. <laughs> Even something as simple as that, my kids might sometimes protest and be like, oh, I don't wanna leave or something. But for the most part, that helps them a lot because I'm not just saying it's time to go. And they're like, what? I didn't know we were getting ready to leave. I wanted to go down the slide three more times and I didn't have the chance. So I really find that this helps. I find that it really helps your kids not throw a tantrum as much when it's time to transition. So anytime you can give them a warning is just better. A warning that the activity is about to change, a warning that it's almost time to take a bath or whatever. I really recommend using a timer. I'll often just use like my phone timer, but you could even get like a stopwatch type of thing you carry around. And when that thing beeps, they know that it's time. So in this way, you're kind of making the timer the bad guy. <laughs> so you're not the bad guy saying it's time. The timer's telling us it's time to do it. And I find that that helps like a little bit with them not flipping out as much <laughs> when you have to change an activity or start something new. Also, if you have issues, like timers can also be used in situations where you have issues with kids like fighting over a toy, siblings not getting along. We'll do things like, here's a timer, you can take it. You can have five minutes for each person to use that toy and then it's the next person's turn. And that actually can help as well because again, the timer's the one deciding it and the kids can start to kind of figure out how to, you know, work things out between each other, make it fair. And so I find timers are really helpful. All right, and the last one I believe is extremely important, but it is called front loading. Uh, if, you, if you're a teacher or anyone in education, you've probably heard of this term before, but if you're front loading children for something, you are really trying to prepare them and help them have all the knowledge and information they need before you do a new experience. We do front loading a lot with our children. I think this is a typical parenting thing. Like before you go to the grocery store, you might be telling the kids, okay, we're gonna go in the grocery store. We're only getting three things. We're not gonna beg for stuff. We're not gonna ask for candy, <laughs> you know. You may front load already if you have biological kids, but with adopted kids, you really need to front load a lot of things, a lot more than you would think. For example, 
if our family is ever going to like an aquarium, we went to the aquarium recently, or to the zoo or on a trip somewhere, I make sure that I have shown my kids many pictures of what the place looks like. And with the internet, this makes it like so easy. Um, I show them as many pictures as I can. I explain to them what it will be like when we're there, what types of behaviors are normal. Like we're not gonna be running around. We're gonna be staying with our parents. We're not gonna be talking to strangers, you know, like all of those things so that they understand not only what's expected of them, but they understand what to expect from that place so that they don't have to be fearful. For example, with some kids, if you tell them we're going to the aquarium to look at sharks, they might think if they've never been to an aquarium before or have no experience with it, which could be very common for a child from foster care, they might think that you mean they have to go swimming with sharks. Like, I know this sounds funny, but they really might think that. <laughs> and so being as clear as you can and showing, no, look, there's a big glass in front of it and the shark is swimming around and we're outside and we're safe and we just get to look at it. You know, that can actually be really important because you'll discover your kids have fears about things you never even expected or thought of. And a lot of that just comes from a lack of experience doing things like this. I know for our kids who are older, we had so many first experiences with them I did not anticipate. First time sledding, first time riding a bike, first time swimming, first time going to aquarium, first time going going to a museum, first time going to a zoo. I mean, you name it, we almost had like the first experience with them. And so I realized during that process, there's a lot they don't really know. And so you have to explain it to them. And I find especially showing them pictures or even better videos of what the place is going to be like and what they're going to be doing. They feel way more excited and ready. I actually did this with my kids before I decided to take them to Disney World. I showed them tons of Disney vlogs with like families that were going there and the rides and I waited to see their reactions to it and they were like, I want to go there, of course, you know, but I didn't know because they have a lot of fears about different things. I didn't know if they'd actually want to ride a like a roller coaster, but it was good because in those videos they got to see exactly what it was like. They knew what to expect. And so when we went, I feel like we had a pretty smooth trip. The same with our crews. I think if we had not front loaded them watching all these vlogs and videos of other families going on a Disney cruise, then it would have been a lot scarier to them, like being in the middle of the ocean on this boat and all of that. But our kids felt like they completely knew what was going on. They had already watched videos of the kids going to the kids club and playing. They were excited. I mean, I honestly feel like they had already, they already felt like they had been on a cruise before, like they were so prepared. And so anything you can do like that, will seriously help your kids so much. Even if it feels like overkill to you, it's probably not. It just helps add to their feeling of security. So those are my five ways that you can help reduce anxiety for your foster or adopted child. I hope it was super helpful for you. If it was, and you've made it all the way to the end of this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would mean the world to me because it helps more people find my videos and I can help more families. And remember, I have that pinned comment at the top if you would like to work with me as an adoption consultant. I would love to work with you and help your family pursue this dream to adopt, especially if you want to adopt from foster care. So go ahead and book a consultation with me if you're interested, and I'd love to talk to you. That's all for today. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.